Roberta Winters, president of the League of Women Voters of Radnor Township. If you listen to many of the Radnor Township meetings, you'll hear about land development, zoning, overlay districts, and exceptions. They seem to be on every agenda. Today I have with me Jim Campbell, a planner who worked on the Garrett Hill Overlay District to talk to us about these topics and how our overlay district in Garrett Hill was developed through community involvement. Welcome, Jim. It's nice to have you here back in Radnor, albeit virtually. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, very happy to be here. Um, I'm an architect and planner and have been working uh, with my business partner, Bob, since the early 70s. Uh, back then, out of the 60s, we were, we were idealistic, young, minted designers right, wanting to change the world. Um, you know, we were participants in the first Earth Day celebrations, and after college, relatively poor, we went to uh, work on affordable living. Uh, of course, that included affordable transportation, biking, public transportation, and, and affordable housing, which involved rehabilitation, restoration, historic preservation, uh, almost anything else that uh, to us was uh, affordable and something we could do. So we both purchased shells uh, in disinvested areas uh, within biking distance of our uh, post-college jobs. In our spare times, we fixed up shells and uh, in the Sierra Club, Bob and I were both members, uh, we began to work on environmental issues like trail development uh, and other efforts increasing recycling, composting, clean air, clean water, uh, wilderness preservation, all the stuff that Sierra Club was uh, supporting. And then uh, during the, the early 70s, Sierra Club was involved in a wild and scenic rivers program uh, and came to our local chapter with a total of 500 bucks to help us determine how we might uh, help preserve our wild and scenic rivers. Uh, well, in the 70s, you know, Philadelphia didn't really have much in the way of a wild and scenic river. Uh, so we started to study the Delaware and the Schuylkill, and of course, the Schuylkill one hands down. Uh, so um, the Sierra Club also had a motto of use it or lose it. And uh, so we decided to build a hiking, biking, and equestrian trail uh, from the Delaware River to the Appalachian Trails. It's now called the Schuylkill Trail. Hopefully everybody's been on it. Uh, and we are still building this trail and branches to it almost 50 years later. Well, it uh, seems like what you started doing is becoming more in vogue today. So that's all about planning was done years ago that's being even more relevant today. Well, well, we certainly think it is. Since then, we've been uh, planning and building trails, greenways, uh, parks, but also doing architectural re restorations, rehabilitations, uh, historic preservation, occasionally new construction with more appropriate technologies like solar, net uh, zero energy use, um, electric vehicle charging stations, green roofs. You know, so. I could go on and talk about that forever, but uh, I let's bet talk you about could. <laughs> Garrett Hill. Well, so zoning is important in all the communities because you're talking about making life, you know, certainly the quality of life improved through the kinds of work you've done. So sure. zoning and planning are very important to you, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. So when you came to Radnor, there was there was talk about this overlay district in Garrett Hill, and I think that's what brought you to Radnor. Do you remember what was the, there's a, a picture of it that Vince is gonna show us, and what what is exactly this overlay district, and why was it, in, you know, what was the purpose of it? Well, uh, the purpose of the overlay district um, and an overlay district, I should say, you know, is a collection of additional restrictions or regulations and uh, perhaps allowances or incentives that further um, help define uh, a specific area. Um, for instance, you know, we often find uh, historic overlay districts, uh, you know, in our cities and townships. And these districts are used to help 
uh, preserve the historic character of a neighborhood by allowing pre-existing structures and uses to remain as and be protected uh, as they are. Uh, and um, also by requiring or incentivizing uh, new construction to conform with uh, the, the existing, even when the underlying zoning oftentimes does not address uh, such desires. But um, in addition to historic overlays, there are also uh, overlays that modify the heights of buildings, for instance. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, along the glide path uh, of uh, you know, airplanes to an airport, uh, you have uh, height uh, restrictions or height overlays. Um, there are also environmental overlays um, that seek to protect fragile ecosystems uh, or certain types of farming. Uh, there are urban development overlays that seek to uh, direct uh, development to provide open space, pedestrian amenities, parking, and, and so forth, uh, special, uh, specialized to, to, a, to a particular area. Um, so overlays have many uses, uh, but are all directed towards the certain characteristics that help define a certain area. Do you remember how that process worked in Garrett Hill, Jim? I think you were involved in that. Yeah, sure. Uh, in uh, 2007, many of uh, the members of the Gary Hill community, if I remember correctly, were looking ways uh, for ways to help preserve the unique character of Garrett Hill. Um, so they wanted to undertake a special review uh, of the community and help figure out how to protect its special character and critical assets. Um, and then how to help direct future development, because we all knew that future development was, was, was coming. You know, so uh, what were those critical assets? Well, um, lots of local owned uh, and operated businesses. Mm -hmm. It was a great place, uh, you know, to do business. It was a great place to live, had a, a diverse range of single family homes, had a nice small neighborhood feel, had wonderful parks. Uh, you know, in other words, it was a real understandable community. Uh, so Garrett Hill asked us, in essence, to, you know, how do we stay as we are and yet still allow for growth and, and change that is inevitable? Uh, you know, how do we produce uh, the best while addressing some of the shortcomings and, and, and uh, again, prepare for the future? So uh, Garrett Hill got uh, Radnor Township to authorize the development of a special study to help uh, Garrett Hill develop uh, the Garrett Hill Overlay District. Uh, the scope of work was to develop a master plan and overlay district that would help guide the community and township decision makers uh, in the future development, preservation, and stability uh, and sustainability of Garrett Hill. And it wasn't an overnight process, was it, Jim? No, no, no. It took many months, uh, but uh, it was it was a really wonderful process, and thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, we we were charged with organizing and holding a series of public meetings to get the feelings and, and the desires of the community, and to help the community develop uh, a vision for the future, uh, and then an ordinance to implement that that vision. Uh, Part of the process is sort of figuring out, you know, who we are and where we want to and want to go, and then uh, sort of how to implement that that vision. Uh, to begin with, we presented a brief historic review of the community, a uh, review of previous planning, um, and uh, then you know we were given a, a series of master plan concepts that we uh, you know, were to be included in, in our work, you know. What does Garrett Hill want to be? Um, uh, what kind of pedestrian enhancements, street, street con connectivity? You know, how can Garrett Hill become more interconnected? Um, how will the residents and workers uh, alike utilize the Route 100 trolley? Um, village commons, you know, where, where would there be a place to gather for social events and, and uh, um, you know, other, other things, uh, what kind of height and scale of the, of the neighborhood, uh, you know, do we want? 
was the 35 foot maximum building height okay as is, or should it be increased or decreased? And what about all the setbacks? Um, again, the historic character was a, a constant theme. Density, mixed use. Um, Everything was looked at. And I oh, remember I've, traffic being a particularly yeah. challenging area. Do you remember the traffic issues in, in Garrett Hill? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Garrett Hill, um, you know, is really heavily impacted by traffic, both on Conestoga and, and, and Garrett um, Avenue. Um, we even talked, I think, about making Garrett Avenue one way at one point in time it, because it's still not, you know, really wide enough. Right. We had, we had certainly discussed uh, Garrett Avenue. Garrett has, has all that cut through traffic. Uh, and I'm sure it still does. Still today. does. <laughs> um, right, exactly. So um, one of the things we looked at was Garrett uh, Avenue and whether or not uh, it could become a one-way road somehow, uh, which would accommodate more on-street parking, but also wider sidewalks and better street lighting and, and uh, much more pedestrian uh, amenity, you know, Pedestrian safety was also a big issue. It wasn't just vehicular traffic. It was also pedestrian safety. And many of the sidewalks, uh, you know, were created as an afterthought. Yeah. Um, many were only wide enough for, a, you know, a single file. And some didn't even <laughs> exist. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that the one of the other things that were problematic there is the, uh, the utility poles and everything are right in the sidewalk. Right. So right. It, it's, you know... In some areas of the township, the utilities are behind houses or underground, but yep. not in Garrett Hill. I know, I know, I know. So we even looked at the possibility of setting, um, making bulb outs, you know, that we could accommodate, uh, you know, adequate street lighting so that it wouldn't impact the sidewalks. Um, we had all sorts of different discussions about what to do, you know, with, with Garrett Avenue. Yeah. And then Conestoga has its traffic issues too with parking and stuff for the. Oh, absolutely. The, you know, the uh, perpendicular parking on uh, Conestoga has always been a, a, a concern and challenge. Um, um, truck parking, truck deliveries were, were a, a big problem and I'm sure still are. Um, and, uh, you know, even walkability on, on uh, Conestoga it just doesn't exist in, in, in places. So uh, Conestoga, uh, with all its traffic, is um, uh, really an interesting, uh, interesting <laughs> road to, to handle. Well, we gave you lots of challenges. And I know one of the other challenges in our community is always the parking issue. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I know there was some plans to do, you know, things like community parking or other parking, because right now, you know, with the houses and people having multiple cars, it's just, you know, finding right. a parking spot is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Right, right. You know, a 17th and 18th century uh, town it has great difficulties accommodating a 19th and 20th century uh uh, you know, transportation needs and, and parking needs. So uh, parking is extremely uh, uh, restricted. Um, you know, the businesses uh, hurt, the residents hurt uh, from, from uh, inadequate parking. And, uh, you know, uh, Garrett Hill also has uh, great access to the Route 100 uh, trolley, but uh, it's not ADA accessible. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the stations are rather remotely located, <laughs> I guess. And dated. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, likewise, you know, there's no bicycle facilities in, in the town to speak of. So, uh, you know, Garrett, Garrett Hill has uh, uh, lots of interesting uh, traffic and, and parking problems, you know. And I know some of your visioning activities included things like bike lanes and uh, yeah. common parking areas and, you know, wider sidewalks and, you know, yeah. even outdoor dining. Because that yeah. was something that you would, you know, was even possible when you were looking at even along Garrett as well as along Conestoga. That's right. Sure, sure. Um, you know, there's, there's this concept of eyes on the street. Uh, and, of course, our, our our concept of sidewalk dining was done before the pandemic, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but but the eyes on the street is a really uh, sort of a nice concept uh, in that, and it just makes a neighborhood more friendly, safer, um, and uh, it's just generally a, a nice enhancement. Um, so, um, but you got to have the parking and traffic under control and wide enough oh, sidewalks and yep. all, all the other pieces to go with it. So it all, all fits together. Right. So as you say, it's part of that balancing act between what you want, what you'd like and what's there and what's allowable. And that's right. It is always a balancing act. We don't have the ability or the money to do everything. So uh, part of the, the whole process was to figure out what were, what were we going to do with uh, Garrett Hill dollars? You know, how, what was most important? How, how can we uh, sort of target those things that were most important to, to the neighborhood? And I think the other thing that may be more unique about, say, Garrett Hill than other municipality townships and little villages is we're very close to the business and residential areas are very close to each other. Yes. Yes. Which I think sure. can create um, challenges as you try to plan. But it, it certainly does because there's always conflicts between, you know, businesses and residents, uh, um, Particularly where you've got, uh, you know, a bar or nail house or a, uh, you know, a restaurant with with outdoor dining and music and uh, you know, a lot of things you, you like to go to those uh, kind of businesses for. Uh, so there's always a uh, conflict, and and the question is just, you know, how best to uh, uh, deal with that those conflicts, to how to find it, you know compromises or buffers or some architectural way to, to handle handle those those kinds of things well i know for example it's easy for my you know i have a couple of you know children in their 30s and they like to go to places to outdoor dine but i don't think they want to live beside one when they're trying to put a child to sleep you know that's there's a whole there's a yeah. whole different dynamic that goes on as you age and stage and family lives change so one of the other thing that was important, I think, when we talked about the community was the scale. Yes, right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. What uh, scale and these standards yeah. have to do with community development? Right, right. Uh, during our work with Garrett Hill, there was really a strong support for maintaining the current scale of the present development. Uh, this led to desire to uh, keep the maximal height of the residential and commercial buildings to 30 to 35 feet, somewhere in there, you know, two and a half to three stories. Um, and discussion occurred throughout the process uh, about uh, lowering the height limit from the existing 35 feet that was existing in the, in the zoning code at the time. And uh, Garrett Hill ultimately recommended three stories and 35 feet as, as the, the maximum height, where Delaware County uh, comments recommended two stories, uh, but our discussion with the Planning Commission resulted in a, the two and a half to three stories and 35 feet as, as the recommended maximum. And this was in keeping uh, with the, what we call the cottage style housing, which is generally characterized by peak roofs, front porches, well-ordered windows, uh, often with dormers, you know, um, that, that kind of thing. Something that really fit within the, the neighborhood. So the idea was to help preserve the scale of the neighborhood. So it was 35 feet to start with, and we just kept it at 35? Yeah, I, basically, it hasn't changed. But Delaware County actually wanted it to be lower. Well, yeah, yeah. There's this uh, concept of green acres development, you know, where where if you're doing a big subdivision out in the middle of nowhere, you know, <laughs> sometimes you don't want that, that kind of height, but not, not in a village, you know. Right. Villages need to, to grow up. Well, that's, that's good to remember. I was also going to ask you about the lot sizes. I think Garrett Hill has some unusual sizes for their lots, and they kind of cut oh. strangely, as I recall. Yeah, absolutely. Again, being a, a an older community, uh, by and large, right, the existing lot sizes were commonly uh, characterized as being generally narrow and often deep. And, of course, historically, 
This was to accommodate uh, the development of a vegetable garden, uh, a, a well, and perhaps a privy or outhouse. Yeah. And, um, with, and with the lot standards, there was also a desire to reduce the minimum lot size uh, that was mandated at the time by the, uh, the township-wide zoning code. Again, it was a, a Green Acres code where, you know, Quarter acre lots were perfectly fine. <laughs> there aren't any in Garrett Hill to speak of. You know. so, so things like setbacks and things made a difference, and you wouldn't ordinarily have what we have in Garrett Hill if you looked at the really the typical codes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, along Garrett Avenue in particular, yeah, well, along Conestoga, very small uh, front yards. Um, you know the present zoning code at the time didn't allow for those uh, small front yards, didn't allow for uh, small side yards that we have in Garrett Hill. Um, so, um, you know, it was So by really, making this overlay district, we actually made them comply with something that they weren't able to comply with before? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, the overlay district uh, really seriously, we, we seriously looked at the average lot sizes on Garrett and, and uh, uh, on Conestoga and, and all the surrounding uh, neighborhood and, and came up with uh, a series of lot sizes that were pretty much in keeping with exactly what was there. So uh, new construction or infill construction uh, or, uh, uh, you know, someone knock down their house or their house burned down, right? And they could, they really could build back uh, what what was there before uh, and, uh, you know, without having to go through zoning variances and, and all, all of that. Kind of. So actually they could change the footprint a little bit and still exist. Oh, yes. Or oh, they had, yeah. they yeah. were limited to what was existing before. Right, right. Yeah. Um, they had more they, flexibility. Yeah, in the overlay, there's a lot of flexibility um, uh, given there's certain parameters, you know, in terms of uh, building size, um, setbacks. Um, again, we we always wanted to keep uh, sort of the, the sense of the, of the village, but um, it's still a lot of flexibility because one has to plan for, for future flexibility in that. And so it wasn't designed to keep it exactly the way it was seven or eight no. years ago. It's designed to grow and change and meet the new ordinances that were written. Right. Yep. Yeah, very few of the existing uh, Garrett Hill uh, properties uh, uh, were able to conform to, to that present zoning. So we really had to adjust that zoning to be able to accommodate the existing, but also to be able to allow, uh, you know, for the new construction. So the benefits were, uh, residents actually got some benefits out of this? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I think you can see it today that the Garrett Hill is still alive and viable and, and a great place to live and, you know, with wonderful gardens and great landscaping and, and uh, uh, a mix of land uses, uh, easy to walk to, you know, the, the, the village center, which is Garrett and Conestoga. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did the businesses get um, any benefits from this opportunity, oh, yeah, too? absolutely, sure. Uh, like the residents, uh, we accommodated the, the existing business uh, uh, businesses as, uh, as best we could, uh, you know, so... Um, there was the ability to maintain a, a mix of small scale commercial uses along with uh, the residential uh, development. Um, so we provided for mixed use development, uh, combined retail, office, residential uses, um, you know, on the court or even in a, on a single lot. It was a, um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, hopefully the businesses obtained and maintained their customer base and achieved some flexibility to preserve and enhance their businesses. And that probably wouldn't have been possible under the old ordinances because they were mostly, uh, you know, as you say, built before they had the kinds of rules and regulations we operate right, today. Right, right. 
did. It, the zoning in 2007 really directed uh, commercial development to uh, commercially zoned areas uh, that were completely independent of residential areas, uh, no real mixed use. Um, again, not not a, a village approach to uh, to zoning. Well, I think you know, based on my experience, I think. And your hard work, I think that the Garrett Hill Master Plan and Overlay District certainly help protect our neighborhood in many ways and enhance our community. And as you indicated, really provided for more development than would have ever been possible before. Yeah, yes. Well, I would like to thank you, Jim, for joining us today, sharing your expertise with our Radnor community. And if you have um, any questions, I'm sure you can certainly um, follow up with me and I'll certainly be happy to follow up with you because we are grateful to Mainline TV for their willingness to provide this venue to help provide understanding and educate the public about the importance of land use planning and particularly in our neighborhood. We are most appreciative of the audience who has tuned in to learn more about the importance and the quality of life we share. We hope you'll be inspired and involved as you make a difference in shaping the future of our township through good planning and zoning. And the League of Women Voters is one way to do it. So again, thank you, Jim, and thank you all for learning more about planning and development in our community. Thank you.